So a lot of the time when you want to model things, it's best to use some kind of a photo reference. Well, in this video, we're going to talk about how to import a photo and use it in order to set up a model and quickly create something and also texture it inside of SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by bringing in an image of an object. So in this case, this is just a GoPro camera um, that I took a picture of, and I'm just going to drag that in from Windows Explorer just like this. I'm not even going to worry about getting it to scale yet because when you start getting things to the smaller size that these cameras have in here, um, SketchUp can just have trouble getting enough geometry in here to make it work. So we're just going to leave it big for right now. And I'm just going to start by just drawing a rectangle across the surface right here. And then I'm just gonna draw a little arc in here and it might help to toggle into x-ray mode in order to do this, but I'm just gonna tap the A key and just draw a little arc around this corner. If you find where it says tangent to edge, it's gonna automatically round off your corner for you. So that's kind of what I would recommend. And I'm not even gonna worry about getting these exact, um, I'm just not worried about getting to that level of detail for this kind of modeling, because we're just gonna come in here and photo texture the whole thing anyway. But I'm just gonna draw one more arc like this. And so what that's done is that's given us the general shape of the GoPro camera. Right? And so if I push pull this up, notice I'm gonna get that GoPro shape. But before I do that, I'm gonna jump back out of x-ray mode and I'm gonna go ahead and put this in a group for right now. And I'm actually gonna right click on it and hide it. I'm gonna bring in another photo and kind of align it with this surface. And so the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna find my side image of the camera that I took and I'm gonna bring that in and I'm just gonna rotate it. So I'm just gonna tap the M key to go into move tool and that's gonna give me these little uh, points right here and I can use that in order to rotate around. So one thing you can do with the images that you import is right now, notice how if I double click on it, it's not actually doing anything. But if I right click on it and explode it, and then right click on it again and I make it a group. Now it's just gonna act like a regular group of geometry. So it's just a face with edges. So what that means is that means I can come in here and just kind of size this down a little bit so that I don't have all this extra stuff from the edges right here. So that's gonna make it a little bit easier for me to align my camera with my object over here. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move this over so it might actually be easier to just use, to rescale this with the tape measure. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by measuring the distance from this point to this point right here. And for right now, you can see how this is about, we're gonna call this two feet right here. Well, remember, these are images of the same thing. So if I double click inside of this group, I can use the tape measure tool. I'm gonna tap the control key to make sure I'm not in, uh, in create guide mode but I'm just going to draw an edge across here. I'm gonna type in a value of two feet and hit the enter key. What that's gonna do is that's gonna ask me if I wanna resize this grouper component, and I'm gonna say yes. So now what that means is that means that this has about the same width as my camera over here. And one other, one other thing that I wanna do is I want to tap the Q key and I wanna rotate this so that it's standing up like this. So what that's gonna allow me to do is that's going to allow me to align this corner with this corner right here. And it doesn't have to be perfect, it can just be close. But I'm gonna get it close to this because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this image in order to help me set the depth of my camera. I'm just gonna rotate this down just a little bit so that the bottom kind of aligns. But remember, we have a general shape in here that we hid. So I can just come back in here. I can just double click and notice how when I double click into this mode, and this is one of my like least favorite things about the way SketchUp does stuff, is it kind of like fades out this image right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw a guide or just a line right here that I can push pull to. And we'll go ahead and just say it's gonna fit this whole length right here. So now I can just double click in here and push pull. Well, notice what that's gonna do is that's gonna give me an edge to inference to just like this. So now what I've been able to do is I've been able to use this image in order to get the proportions right on this side. Well, now I want to use this image right here and remove this up to align with this top face. And actually I might go ahead and hide this camera for right now or hide this plane for right now. I'm going to hide this for the moment. 
And I'm just gonna come in here and I'm just gonna draw a circle that aligns with the circle that's right here. And it's a little bit weird because um, this is actually, because this photo isn't 100% flat, this is going to get us close. And so I've drawn this in here and I'm going to edit, unhide. And again, I'm just gonna draw a guideline up that aligns with the top of this camera. So then I can push pull this up right here. And you can see how this is pretty close to accurate for what the actual camera piece might be. And so let's not add any more geometric detail for right now. I might take a copy of this, and move it off to the side just in case. But now what I wanna do is, all I wanna do is I just wanna come in here and I just wanna use those images as textures for my surface. So the way that we can do that is we can actually, because we've got these images in here, right? We can actually sample them as textures using this tool right here. One thing you might need to do, and I'm gonna move this up again, is you might need to take this one, explode it, and then make it a group, but then you can sample that object. Move this down right here. You can sample that object and you can use it as a texture. So if I double click on this face to get inside of this group, notice how I can actually use this as a texture right here. Well, I can also sample the side image that we had over here and use it as a texture as well. So if we look at this, right, what we've been able to do, and it's a little bit weird because of, uh, it's a little bit weird because of the lighting that was in here was slightly different, but we're able to really quickly texture this using this tool. And so what I would do is I would come in here and I would just keep sampling these and just apply them to these surfaces right here. In this case, I might actually create like a custom material for the sides. So I might just call this black material. Maybe put my initials in front of it. Turn off, use texture image and click on okay. But notice how I can use this in order to quickly apply a black-ish material in here, just like this. And so now I wanna texture the bottom side, right? So all I have to do is just drag this image in right here. And one thing you're gonna to wanna to do, um, we're gonna go ahead and right click on it and explode it, and then make it a group again so that we can sample it, is right now, if you were to try to apply this bottom texture material in here, it's applying it kind of like stretched and weird, right? But if we right click in here on our texture and we uncheck the box for projected, that means it's going to use this texture image and try to apply it to this surface. But notice how what this did right here is this is just applying part of that image to this face, but not the part that we want. Well, we can go into our texture, making sure that we're right clicking on the raw face and we can click on the option for position. And so what that's gonna do is that's going to allow us to use these pins in order to position the texture on our surface. And so there's two kinds of ways that you can do this. You can either use fixed pins or not fixed pins. So fixed pins means that I can take these little, uh, I can take these little markers and I can click and drag. So I can use the red one to click and drag. I could use the green one to come in here and set like a rotation factor and a scale factor just by clicking and dragging. That's gonna get us pretty close, but I actually prefer the other function, which we can find by going to texture, position, and turning off fixed pins. And what that's gonna allow us to do is that's gonna allow us to actually set pins on the four corners that we want. So in this particular situation, right, I want this corner right here, move this in a little bit so that it aligns with that. So I'm just single clicking on these to move the pins. We're gonna set this one right here before the corner curve, and then we'll align this one with that one right there. But then what that's gonna allow me to do is that's gonna allow me to actually click and drag this in order to place the texture, right? So if I click and drag to this surface right here, I can use this in order to really quickly add or apply that texture material in here. And so I'm gonna do the same thing for the sides and the back real quick. I'm gonna speed that up. All right, and so now there's a couple different things that we can do in here because notice how what we've got in here is you've got a surface and textures aren't gonna map very well to that surface, right? So if I sample this and try to apply it, it's gonna be kind of like, uh, 
well, we'll call it clunky along that corner. And the other thing I can't do is I can't come in here and use um, the tool that I was using before, the position texture tool. So there's a couple different ways that you could go about this. The first is you could just make these square corners and just not worry about it. If this is like sitting on a table or something like that in your model, it really doesn't matter. And so what we wanna do in this situation is we wanna download an extension called Fredo Tools from the Sketchication Extension Warehouse. I'll link to a video about it in the notes down below. But what that's gonna do is that's gonna give us access to a tool called Through Paint. And so Through Paint is gonna allow us to select a surface, right? So I'm gonna select this surface right here, and then activate Through Paint. And that's gonna allow me to sample a material like this one, and then place it on this surface. And there's different mapping types right here, right? There's like a quad mesh, there's a natural, other things like that. We're gonna go ahead and just select the quad mesh for right now. But what this does is this allows us to apply that material on here. And then if we can find our GoPro in here, so that's gonna allow us to apply that material in here and then move it around on this surface. And you can use the little sliders in order to scale this up and down in order to get it to match, but you can use this in order to quickly map a material that follows a corner like this inside of SketchUp. And then from there, you could come in here and if you wanted to, you could use a tool like, uh, you could use a tool like Fredo Corner, which that one is a paid extension now, but you could use it to add bevels to your edges if you decided that you wanted to do that. One thing to ask yourself though, when you're doing this kind of modeling is do you really need that? And the reason I say that is because really this is probably going to be a background model that's going to sit on a table or something like that. So there's really no point to doing that. I mean, you could definitely come in here if you wanted to, for example, and apply some more detail to like your camera surface. But you kind of have to ask yourself what that gets you. Right? Like if this is just acting as context in the background, there's really no point to adding any additional geometric detail. You could come in here and get super detailed with the way that you model this, but I probably wouldn't in this situation. But maybe the last thing we would do is we would come in here once we're done modeling. And I generally like to model these things larger um, before getting them to real world dimensions, just because SketchUp sometimes doesn't like the size in here. But let's say now we wanted this to be a real world size. Well, all we would have to do is just double click inside of our group and we could just use the tape measure tool. And I'm gonna click on this surface. Notice how it's creating a guide right here. Tap the control key in order to get create guide mode turned off. But I'm just gonna click on this point and then I'm gonna type in a value of 2.3 inches and hit the enter key. What that's gonna do is that's gonna allow me to resize or scale this GoPro model just like this. So now if I was to measure this, this GoPro that we just modeled is to real world size, right? So if I was to add a dimension between this point and this point, Notice how this is very close to being real world size inside of our model. So we can use this in order to model things out using photos really quickly in SketchUp. All right, so this is a really fast method for adding context objects in your models. This would also be good for like game assets or something like that. But I'd love to hear from you if you're using textures this way in SketchUp. If you are interested in learning more ways to use SketchUp, make sure you check out my course, which I will link to on this page. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.